Today we got the fourth book of the Keeper of the Lost City series. Hello fellow plot questers, it is I, Aaron the Plot Quester, and today we got this awesome book, Keeper of the Lost Cities, book four, Never Seen. Now, last last book, Ever Blaze, we saw that uh, the four kids, uh, Bianna, Fitz, Keith, I mean five, Dex, and Sophie, they've Ran. They ran away to the Black Swamp because the council is kind of going nuts because of the crisis. And basically, they've run to this place called Alovator. I don't know how to say that name because it's a really hard name. And it is one of the Black Swan's hideouts. And there they meet the Black Swan Collective, which includes a couple people who have disguised themselves and have nicknames depending on their disguise. And these include Granite, Frost, and phase and a and ghost and a couple other um and and these and this collective have either masks or use their abilities to disguise themselves which makes them these really really cool like guardian type leader people of the black swan and there in order to prove that they are trustworthy they give sophie back a memory a memory which states, which talks about a boy who disappeared. And she confirms that within her memory, when she was a human, it was indeed a boy who had gone to her, seen her, and then light leaped away. And she realized that was an elf now. And now she's kind of confused, because why did an elf, before Fitz found her, like, do that? It's, it's kind of weird, isn't it? Then they start training to free Prentice. And they try and they try and they try and they get ready to do so. And then when they actually try to do the breakout, the council catches them. And then they are they be, they go at an they become an impasse where Sophie has a catch which has what has this council's sacred secrets in her hands that she could break if the council went at them. And she manages to run away, and finally, the council and the Black Swan makes a deal. They will give the council Yethen, the, uh, the um, never-seen member that they have in the captive, and the council will give them Prentice back. And also, as a part of the deal, Sophie and the rest of the, yeah, the, rest of the gang will get to go to Exilium. Now, Exilium is the, is the school for basically the unwanted, the failures, from, um, from the freaking Foxfire. And everyone really fears Exilium, but Rui, uh, one of the Black Swan, uh, well, not the Black Swan, one of the Never Seen members, who, who like, disturbed Sophie when they, like, met, and he's a Pisiniopath, I have no idea how to say that, and he can basically create, like, these cool force field things, which is, I think, really, really cool. And because he's a Pisinio, Pisinio, whatever path, he is quite useful, and we want to know who this guy is, what he wants, and what kind of history he has in Exilium. So, kind of undercover, they go to Exilium. There, they meet a Shade and a Hydrokinetic, who seem to be not that bad, and who seem to be really friendly and have pretty pretty great powers. And they manage to team up with these two, and their names are Tan and Lin. And these two, Lin being the Hydrokinetic and Tam being the Shade, are twins. And they are pretty powerful, and they, they thought that should, they would probably help the Black Swan cause. Meanwhile, the gnomes are dying out. Because there is some sort of mysterious disease going on that's killing all of the gnomes. Which is honestly not a good situation. And we start, and Dax manages to hack into the council database and find something about Dracostomes. Which is a weird name, and it seems that the council knows something about this disease, but they aren't officially saying it yet. And then, disguised, they go to the council's big announcement. And there, they're ready to receive any news, and then the orgs come in. And they say, yes, the disease is our fault. It feeds on shadow vapor. And there's only one cure, and it's the bark of the Panakis, which we have in our kingdom. And Sophie and, Fit, uh, Sophie and Fitz goes all cognate power. By the way, they are cognates, which means they have a telepathic connection, which allows them to boost, them, boost each other up. And they look into King Demitar's mind, and they find, oh crap, so the cure is 
fake. What, what are we what are we supposed to do? And however they th actually no, they find out after they like invade the Org Kingdom. And they invade the Org Kingdom with Alvar as the guide because Alvar knows how things go around pretty much around the Org Kingdom. And they manage to go in and they fight this they fight the Matar. They find out the cure is fake. However, as our escape route, our friend Lin and unleashes all of her super cool hydrokinetic powers flood the entire city, Razabog, and they fly out of there, which is pretty cool. And, however, we find out that Alvar is one of the never seen, and the boy that disappeared within Sophie's memory, which is honestly just not, not, not good, guys. It's, it's not a good situation, because it means that Alvar knows a lot of, a lot of stuff about Sophie and her friends and everything, and this is really bad. And Alvar talks something about the Vakra legacy and how disgusting it is. And so he basically, it's it's not a good situation. It's really not. It, it isn't. And it's uh, it's not a good idea. And Alvar, with, with that betrayal, we're kind of shook. And then Sophie decides that the uh, Alacrys need to roam free because they are safer that way anyways, which she tells the council. And after a little bit of a debate, the council says yes. And after the alicorns are gone, uh, Keith and Sophie have a private moment. However, we find Keith wants to betray them as well. Well, not betray, really, but he wants to go into the Never Seen undercover. And what he does is he basically like uses, uses Sophie's catch or this stupid little thing that the council put all of their secrets in. And he goes, okay, I, I got the catch. And he fakes giving the catch. Well, he does give the catch, but he says he'll steal it back. And he basically fakes the never seen to them thinking, okay, Keith's one of us now. And he goes into their group, and that is pretty much the end of the book. And also, we find out that Mr. Forkel is actually Magnate Leto, who is the current principal of Foxfire. And we find out that Granite, one of the Black Swan collective members, is actually Tyrion, which is cool. And that is the end of the book. Okay, so I want to make a couple comments about how the book went and how I really liked it. And one thing that I really uh, enjoyed about this is it kind of sort of reminds me almost of Harry Potter's like last couple books where, you know, like Umbridge going against Harry and the council going against Sophie and things going really, really bad. And then from bad to worse, however, Harry Potter had Hermione Granger and... um. Ron Weasley, and Sophie, however, has an entire clue. Dex, a technopath who can manipulate technology. A fellow telepath, Fitz, who is cognizant with her and they can power up each other. And we have another one, another person, who is named Keith, who is an empath, who can read people's emotions. We got Bianna, who can turn invisible. And now to the new to the gang is Tam and Lynn. A Shade, who can control shadows, and Lin, and a Hydrokinetic, who can control water. And we've got a pretty cool team of Ender-style team getting up here. And I think it's really, really cool. I really like how that turned out. And it reminds me of Harry Potter a little bit. And it's just, it's just good all around. And the plot twist about Alvar is just... I sort of expected something from when Alvar was being rec reluctant in the middle of the book when he was guiding them through um, Razabog when they're going into Razabog and trying to get stuff. And I think that um, she really, Shannon, uh, Shannon Messenger really showed that well, like his slow reluctance and that I love how at the start we get this random, seemingly random piece of information about the boy that disappeared and that's Alvar. So it like connects and it connects and it's like we don't expect things to go together that way. However, the pieces are already there, which is, Really hard to do, by the way. I know. I would know. I, I'm writing a book. And I think all of those positive factors really affect the book as a whole. And it's just it's just really, really good. I really love this series. And I read it really, really fast. And like always, your plot quester and the plot quester. Highly recommend it for any fantasy lover out there. And you will love this powerful new protagonist. Have a good day.